When planning a new mahogany plantation, it's important to start on a good site. Existing vegetation can be a good indicator of site. For instance, shallow hard soils are often fernland and will only grow into crops for one season. Trees planted on shallow soils often show signs of dieback due to seasonal drought. Trees will grow best on the deepest soils, which store more moisture and nutrients. In the past, many plantations were planted at 10 metres by 3 metres to allow intercropping. Due to the poor soils, intercropping was not sustainable, the trees did not grow well, and 330 trees per hectare were too few to choose from for a good final crop. Most successful plantations on Nui have more trees and are planted at rectangular spacings, for instance 3 metres by 2 metres or 4 metres by 4 metres. For a good choice of trees for the final crop of about 150 to 200 trees per hectare, four times as many trees should be planted. There are several reasons that trees will not be suitable to keep. They may grow slowly because they are on a rock, they may have two stems or a bent or they may just be slow. Four by three metres equals 830 trees per hectare, about four times the desired final crop. So that is our choice for this demonstration plantation. This is a uh, three by two metre planting. It's, it's quite a high stocking, a very high stocking. And uh, the stems are very, generally very straight. And anything that's bent or malformed uh, could be cut out at this stage because it's not going to make the final crop. For every four trees you plant, only one is a good one. So you need, if you need 200 after 50 years, then you need to plant 800. Rectangular spacing has several advantages in addition to providing more trees to choose from. The forest will shade the ground earlier, reducing the need to weed. The shade and fallen leaves will help retain moisture in the soil and keep the soil and roots cool. The shade on all sides will encourage the trees to grow straight with smaller branches and longer stems. Where existing ground cover is low, the orientation of rows is not important as all areas get good light. If there is tall remnant tree cover, it is best to have rows running east to west to reduce shading. Otherwise, rows at right angles to roads and tracks, so it's easy to see down the rows for checking and access. Spacing in the rows should be approximately three metres. This doesn't need to be exact. It is better to move the planting hole to avoid a coral rock than to plant a tree on top of the rock. Three large steps, or four small ones, is good enough to estimate spacing. It's important to have straight rows and regular spacing in the row. It is a great help in finding seedlings when they need to be weeded. Establish a baseline with sighter poles so that brushing and planting can be kept straight. Brush about a two metre wide strip the length of the row. The vegetation next to the row doesn't need to be cut down unless it overhangs the row. Digging a hole with a narrow spade would be ideal this provides topsoil for filling in around seedling roots. Keep the soil from the hole close by so it can easily be pulled back into the hole. The hole needs to be about 25 centimetres deep, deep enough to hold all the roots. There is more moisture available the deeper the hole. Sometimes because of coral rocks, a spade or shovel cannot dig a good hole and the hole needs to be driven into the ground, but this doesn't provide topsoil for filling in the hole. The stand at Valpapahi Farm appears to be from a good seed lot, and since there are no seedlings available in bags, we will look to use some of the natural regeneration under the stand. These are called wildings. For planting, we are looking for seedlings about 50 centimetres tall from ground level to the tip with a stem di diameter at ground level of one to one and a half centimetres. With a sharp spade, cut down at 45 degrees close to the plant 
to sever the taproot, then cut straight down on all four sides to cut side shoots. The seedling will respond by wilting and then grow new roots between the cut and the plant. So the root pruned seedlings can be relocated, they shall be marked either by paint or string. Before lifting seedlings from the natural nursery, strip off the lower leaves to reduce water loss from the plant. Carefully lift the seedlings by loosening the soil around them and keep as many roots and as much soil as possible. The long tap root should have been cut four weeks earlier to encourage new roots. Otherwise, cut the tap root and any other long roots so that the seedling will fit easily into the planting hole. Keep the roots moist by holding them in a plastic bag and only take a plant out of the bag when it is going to be planted straight away. This stops the roots from drying out. Backfill the hole while holding the plant straight and jiggle it to allow the soil to fill in around the roots. Firm the soil and give the plant a cup of water unless rain is very close. Planting should be done in the wet season between December and April. Seedlings transplanted from the shade of the natural nursery will be sensitive to full sunlight. To prevent sunburn of leaves, the plant may need light shade for a few days while it adjusts to the new light level. It is possible to establish a mahogany plantation by direct seeding. The advantage of that is that these trees will keep their taproot and be more stable in cyclones and reach deeper for moisture at an earlier age. Mahogany seeds ripen in August or September and will be dark brown when ripe. The capsule and seeds shown in this video were collected in March and are immature. Seed can be dried and stored with fungicide. Plant three seeds two centimetres deep on a cultivated mound towards the end of the dry season so that seeds do not rot in the ground. Average success rate may only be 40% germination, but some spots will have more than one germinant, which can be carefully transplanted to another site. Cutting climbers at all stages up to five years is important to keep the trees growing straight up. Climbers can pull slender seedlings over. Removing competing weeds around the plant also makes nutrients and water more available for the tree. The base of the tree at maturity will be fluted, so the stump height will be about 50 centimetres above ground level. Hence the need to prune to about 7 metres to attain a 6 metre log. Loppers can be used from the ground to reach up to 2.5 metres, but because there will be few branches this low, a ladder will be necessary to reach higher. A normal chainsaw should not be used above shoulder height, nor from a ladder, for safety reasons. Instead, a motorised pole saw should be used, and larger branches should be undercut first to reduce the risk of tearing the bark as the branch falls down. Prune from the bottom of the tree first so that the branches fall clear. Pruning is best done at the start of the dry season so wounds heal in dry conditions. Pruning should retain a live crown of 35 to 40 per cent of the total height of the tree. On a good mahogany site, prune to 2.5 metres at 18 to 24 months, prune to 4.5 metres at 36 months and prune to 7 metres at between 48 and 60 months. On poorer sites it may take longer to reach these heights. It is a good idea to identify the final crop trees as soon as possible so that work is not wasted on other trees which will be removed before final harvesting. As these poorer trees have been identified they can be cut out. Don't reduce the stand too early because some of the extra trees will grow to provide vanilla poles 
or some other useful product. Later in the rotation, more trees can be removed, but always retain straight, vigorous trees so that there are no large gaps in the canopy. It's sometimes necessary to keep a second grade tree to fill a hole in the canopy. Remove the first poor trees between about age 5 and 10 years, taking out about 200 stems per hectare. Then again at about age 20, take out another 200. Then again at age 30, reduce the stand to the final stocking of about 200 valuable trees by taking out another 200. If thinning is left too late, the final crop trees will not benefit by having increased diameter and it will be more difficult to fell the trees within the stand without causing damage to the final crop trees. Regular small thinnings will allow better selection, better growth and a regular supply of small logs. Following these guidelines, particularly selecting a good site, weeding the young seedlings and pruning side branches will result in a valuable mahogany crop.